<laughs> All right, thank you. So what is cancer? So cancer is uncontrolled uh, growth of abnormal cells in the body. So cancerous cells are also called malignant cells and they are, their cancer grows out of normal cells from the body. So your body is made up of all different kinds of cells. And so when your body needs to make a new cell, um, it gets signals and cells grow and divide to make four, four, make eight. And if they become abnormal, they're supposed to die. And what happens is somehow these abnormal cells continue to grow and they don't know what anything to do that their only purpose is to grow. And so um, it can occur, um, um, you know, when, again, when cells forget to die, there's many different kinds of cancers and they can develop anywhere in your body because you have cells throughout your body. So what is an oncologist? An oncologist is a doctor that treats cancer. Also, it's always, it's because they're always on call. Anyways, that's my bad joke. I, ha I do have some bad jokes in between here, but anyway, so, so if there's, there's three different ways to treat cancer. So either with surgery, systemic therapy or medication or with radiation. And so doctors that treat cancer with surgery, you can be either a surgical oncologist, an orthopedic oncologist, a head and neck surgeon, uro urologic oncologist, gynecologist. And so they go through special residency training in either surgery or orthopedics, and then they do a fellowship in oncology to specialize in that. If they treat cancers with systemic therapy, like me, I'm a medical oncologist. So I do inter I trained in internal medicine and then specialized in hematology oncology. And then, or you can be a pediatrician and then specialize and you can be a pediatric hematologist oncologist. Gynecologists oncologists are interesting in that they both give, they give chemotherapy and they do surgeries. And then radiation oncologists use radiation. They have their own residency program that's five years and you have to be really good in physics. So again, healthy cells are, are throughout your body and every cell in your body has a, a different um, uh, role, right? So you have your genes that were passed on from your parents and your genes are all the same in your entire body. So if uh, that's how you can get the fingerprints or, I mean, that's how you can get a DNA swab and they can check your hair and, you know, they can, they, you can, can't get away with crimes based on that because that's how they get the DNA. But all your genes aren't turned on only the ones in that specific organ. So for example, your liver, only your liver genes are turned on and your eyes, only your eye genes are turned back on. And so, and when you need to make new ones, they grow and divide and they, they, they're supposed to copy, the cells are supposed to cut, the genes are supposed to copy exactly. So every cell's the same. And that genetic material is your DNA and, um, and your immune system is supposed to regulate this process. Your immune system is supposed to recognize abnormal cells and get rid of them. So again, I don't know how many of you were biology majors, or maybe only the um, maybe only the doctors and the nurses on the call. But um, so this is just um, most of you guys did take biology in school, and you probably blocked it out, but. Um, you know, again, you, know, you get, you have your chromosomes that contain your genes and you get 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, and they pair up. And again, when the cells undergo cell division or mitosis, um, they split into two. And so what happens is, is that there are mutations in about 50, 500 genes that we know about so far, that if there's a mutation in those genes that are supposed to be responsible for the cell division, then cancer can form because the cells can grow out of control. So normal cell division, again, two make four, four make eight. It's, they're abnormal. It's supposed to undergo cell death, apoptosis, the damaged cell. If it doesn't, then the damaged cell continues to grow and divide 
can turn can turn into a cancer. So a normal cell has had these receptors on the surface that tell the cell to grow and divide, and and it's in an, an organized fashion. But the cancer cells have excess number of these receptors, so it the cells grow uncontrollably. So a neoplastic mass or a tumor. Brandy said she didn't know what a tumor was. A tumor is just a collection of abnormal cells. And tumors can either be benign or malignant. If it's, and here you can see the tumor, this is a desmoid tumor underneath it. Here's the abdominal wall. Here you can see it on the surface of the leg. And it's just a collection of abnormal cells. So there are benign tumors and malignant tumors. Benign tumors, do not have the ability, they can grow and they can push. So we, there are some benign tumors that we consider sarcomas um, like fibroid, fibromatosis or desmoid tumor, giant cell tumor of the bone, tenosynovial giant cell tumor. They can't go into the bloodstream and spread, but they can push and cause damage. And then malignant cells mean that it has the ability to invade into tissue and through the bloodstream or the lymph system and spread. So that's the difference. So again, you're, you, it could either spread through the bloodstream. So say if you have a tumor in your leg, the, you know, the, the heart pumps the blood, oxygenated blood to the organs, and then the organs take up the blood, take up the oxygen, and then pump it back up through the lungs, the unoxygenated blood back up through the lungs, through the veins and to the heart. And so if you have a tumor in your leg here, goes up the femoral vein and, and that's how it could spread to the lungs. That's where most of sarcomas that are in the legs go. It, that's why it goes to the lungs. Cancers also can spread through the lymph system. Um, but like breast cancer and colon cancer, and that's why a lot of those surgeons will check uh, lymph nodes. But sarcomas, it's rare that they spread through the lymph nodes, although some can like synovial sarcoma, uh, clear cell, rhabdomyosarcoma. So cancer can be um, grouped into term, grouped um, into solid tumors. So like sarcomas, breast cancer, colon cancer, you can actually see the tumors or a hematologic malignancy, which is like a leukemia or a lymphoma or by the system. So solid tumors, most of them are called carcinomas because they start out from the inside lining. So for example, colon cancer starts out from the inside lining of the colon, whereas a leiomyosarcoma or a GIST tumor starts out from the outside, the connective tissue. Sarcomas are of connective tissue. Melanoma are from uh, melanocytes, which are the cells in your skin that are responsible for the pigmentation. And then you have the hematologic malignancies, the ones in the bloodstream, leukemias. Leukemia start out from the white blood cells. Lymphomas start out from lymph nodes. And so, and then they have, they're named after the type of cell. So Again, a lipo is a fat. If it says myo, it's muscle, osteo, bone. So again, carcinoma are from the tissues that line the internal organs that are the inside portion of the, or the skin. Sarcoma is of connective tissue, bone, cartilage, fat, muscle, blood vessels, connective tissue, melanoma, the melanocytes, leukemia, the bone marrow, multiple myeloma are the plasma cells, the cells that are supposed to make antibodies. So here are the incidence rates from last year, breast cancer, about 280,000. So total 1.8 million Americans get breast, uh, cancer every year and breast cancer, 280,000, whereas sarcomas, 13,000. So it's 1% of all cancers and soft tissue sarcomas are more common than bone sarcomas. Bone sarcomas usually affect children, but it can affect young adults and older adults. I just, if, it, if, 
if an older adult gets an osteosarcoma or a Ewing sarcoma, maybe they're just young at heart. Um, and soft tissue sarcoma is again, more common in children and more common in adults, but can also happen in children. How do we diagnose it? We diagnose it with a biopsy, which is just a sample of the tissue that may be cancer. Um, we want to get a good specimen um, because um, otherwise, so the pathologist can look under the microscope. Um, sometimes we can just do a small needle. Um, if, we, if we know it's a sarcoma and we want to see, oh, um, if it came back. Breast cancer, we know most breast cancers start out in the breast so they can just have a little sample. Whereas there's so many different kinds of sarcomas, we wanna get a good core. There's other ways you can get biopsies. Um, you can get uh, colonoscopy, they can biopsy. A bronchoscopy is using a camera through the, um, the lung. So if you ever see scopy, that means they use a camera. Um, and if, they're, if you see otomy, that means they have to open you up. So sometimes they just can't get to the tumor and you have to get a surgery to get a biopsy. Other cancer terms, nodule or lesion. Okay, so you'll hear mass, you'll hear nodule, you'll hear lesion. It's like, what is it? It's all the same. They can be used interchangeably. There's just different terms. Usually when you think about a mass, you think about something big, okay? maybe five centimeters or greater, you would call that a mass or a, a tumor. Whereas um, if we're getting CAT scans and we see something kind of relatively small on the scan, we would call that a nodule or a lesion. Um, the nodule can be used if you're not sure it's cancer. A lesion is used if it's thought to be cancer, usually less than five centimeters. Again, mass or lump interchangeably. Mass can be external or internal, so you can see it on the surface of your, of your arm or leg or abdomen, or you don't see it and you only see it on the scan. A lump is something you can feel. It's typically bigger than five centimeters. Staging is the term that we use for the extent of the, um, the cancer in the body. So for sarcoma, the staging is based on the grade, the size, and the location, if it has spread. And grading is a pathology term that's based on what the cancer looks like under the microscope. Sometimes people get those terms confused. Types of treatment. So we're going to hear a lot about different kinds of treatments today, exciting new treatments. So localized treatment is focused on directly to one area. So surgery, we're just removing the tumor, radiation, just focusing on the tumor, and then there are certain interventional radiology techniques that you'll hear about, either ablation where they can burn it or freeze it, and that's just localized to the one area. Systemic is medication that's dispersed throughout your body. So chemotherapy kills cells that are growing and dividing. Remember, they're undergoing mitosis. From, from slide number three, maybe it wasn't number three, but anyways, from the previous slide. So, so there are different chemotherapy regimens and we use, sometimes we use combination chemotherapy to kill the cell at various times when it's growing and dividing, but it's essentially not specific. Where targeted therapy tries to stop the signals that are leading to the abnormal cell growth. So remember I said those cancer cells, you know, they grow and, they're supposed, and the uncontrolled cell growth. So chemotherapy is killing them while they're growing and dividing. And, um, and, so, but, and then the cancer cell will have these receptors that are being activated. So the targeted therapy tries to block those receptors from being activated. So the cell doesn't know what to do and it dies. Immunotherapy stimulates your immune system to fight the cancer. So the immunotherapy has been explored for many, many years, and um, the, the and we have recent discoveries that okay, we can't just boost the immune system to fight the cancer because the cancer is very smart, has these walls up that block the signal from the immune system is supposed to recognize foreign objects. So, um, but the cancer cell blocks that signal so the, so the immune system doesn't know it's foreign and it doesn't kill it. 
And so um, the, the newer treatments tear down those walls so that the immune system recognizes it as foreign and kills it. Other treatment terms, these are, um, you know, kind of used interchangeably sometimes, but these are like the medical definition. Cure means that you've received treatment for cancer and it hasn't recurred over five years, then you could, make, you could be considered cured. Remission means that you've received treatment and the cancer hasn't returned, but it has been less than five years. So you can't see the cancer, but it's been less than five years, you've been in remission, uh, otherwise it's cure. No evidence of disease means that the cancer has spread, but you can't see the cancer, so it's no evidence of disease. Technically, it's not cured, but you know there are some patients, if some sarcoma patients, that even if it's spread, can still be cured. Metastatic means that it's spread either through the bloodstream or the lymph system to another area in the body away from the original tumor. So, and then treatable. So, metastatic. Everyone, you know, sometimes patients will ask me what their stage is. And if it has spread, it's considered stage four, but stage four tends to get a bad rap. You know, people look up stage four and they get, you know, very shocked about stage four. And stage four, you can have one tumor in one area or you can have tumor throughout your body and it's considered stage four, but it is treatable. Treatable means that we can give you something to control the cancer and and so that it doesn't take over your organ function. Because remember, you need your major organs to live. You need your heart, lungs, liver, kidney, and my joke that probably all of you guys heard by now, brain, do we need it? I don't know, but anyways, so we need those organs. And so as long as we can control the cancer in those organs so it doesn't take over the organ function, you can live with it. And so we call it treatable. Complete response means that you got a treatment and then we can't see the cancer anymore, no measurable disease. Partial response means that you got the, you got treatment and the tumor shrunk by around 30%. If it shrunk by 30%, it's considered partial response. If the cancer hasn't shrunk by 30%, but nothing new and, and it hasn't grown, then it's considered stable disease. And if it's called progressive disease, then there's growth by 20%. Other cancer terms, hereditary means that there's a gene that was passed on from your relatives, so from your parents that caused or contributed to the disease. Genetic is referring to the abnormality in the genes causing or seen in the cancer. So when we send your tumor specimen out for gene mutations, we can see those gene mutations in the cancer, but we don't know for sure if those gene mutations are just in the cancer or it was hereditary, it was spread from your parents. And we can send it and we can, we can test that if you do have a hereditary cancer by sending you to the genetic counselor, which, um, which most sarcomas are not hereditary, but we are referring a lots of patients to the genetic counselor just to be sure. Indolent means slow growing and, um, and aggressive means fast growing or life or quality of life threatening, okay? So those terms are often used. And the most important cancer term, as we talked about earlier in the world is hope. So, you know, again, at Sarcoma Alliance, we want you to feel that you're not alone and we wanna give hope to everyone. So that's the most important cancer term. Okay, I think I have a little bit of time now, right? Do I have some time to talk about a little bit about sarcoma? I do, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me. Go Sorry, ahead. I was muted. I said you do, and you didn't hear me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Let me let me um, switch to the sarcoma one. Okay. Um. Sorry, I didn't know how much time I was going to have, so I. Uh, You've got about 20 more minutes if you want okay, to perfect. take a little more. Yeah, okay. you got 20, 20 25 okay. maybe. Yeah. Okay, so sarcoma specifically, unless you guys, yeah, well, I'll, we'll ask questions. Too. Sarcoma specifically is comes from the word fleshy, especially referring to fish flesh because it looks fleshy. 
And it's a group of tumors arising from the mesenchyme or connective tissue, okay? So um, this is just, um, this is more for, uh, you know, when you're, when you start out in your mother's womb, you just start out with two, you know, one egg, and then you make, then, you know, again, one cell, and then you make multiple cells and they become layers. And the inner layer becomes the endoderm, which is the epithelial cells that make carcinomas. And you have the middle layer, the mesoderm that makes connective tissue. And then you have the ectoderm that makes your skin, okay? And then you get the stem cell and then the stem cell over time differentiates into the different kinds of connective tissue, say the mature and turn into bone, muscle, fat, all the different connect cartilage. And if cancer occurs in these, it's called a sarcoma, okay? So it's rare, only 1% of all cancers. So again, 1.9 ca cases of, now we're up to 1.9 cases of cancer every year, 284 breasts, 16,000 sarcomas. And the average age is young, 55 compared to 65 to 68 in other cancers. And you can see now not all the cancers like breast cancer, children can't get breast cancer, but sarcomas, they can occur in children, young adults, old, older adults, any age. Um, it's equal distribution between men and women. It doesn't, it's not every nationality, every race, every religion, every, every place, socioeconomic status. It does not discriminate. So it's not related to any of those causes. Um, Prior radiation from other cancers um, could cause sarcomas, and it could be certain different kinds of sarcomas. Um, and um, so breast cancer, uh, cervical cancer, and they usually can occur around three to 23 years after the radiation. Now, we do use radiation as a treatment for sarcoma, and we can even give radiation to patients with radiation-induced sarcomas which patients that have had that, like when I tell them, oh, you need radiation, they get very confused, but it, it can be effective. Other toxins that we've discovered, um, herbicides, wood preservatives, pesticides, Agent Orange. So um, patients that have been, uh, that have fought in Vietnam and were exposed to Agent Orange. And I think a couple years ago at our sarcoma conference, our sarcoma exchange in Miami, we had a patient that said her father ha had been in the, the um, Vietnam. So not, um, and I think she said that there were a couple of patients like that out there. Um, vinyl chloride and plastics, tamoxifen that's used for breast cancer can cause uterine sarcomas. There are some hereditary syndromes. So here's a, for example, a patient with neurofibromatosis where these are benign tumors, but they can mutate into a sarcoma. Um, Lee-Frumani syndrome, which is a hereditary syndrome where patients, a lot of family members will have breast cancer, brain tumors, leukemias, lymphomas, they can get sarcomas. So, if we see a patient and they have a lot of cancers in the family, you can go to the genetic counselor and get tested. And, and if you do have Lee-Fermani syndrome or this mutation in P53, we can do active surveillance and monitor you closely for the other cancers. Sarcomas are divided into two types, soft tissue or bone. So they're Soft tissue is just the connect, is everything that's a connective tissue that's not bone. Bone can either be osteo, bone, chondro, cartilage, or Ewing's is just named from Dr. Ewing's that could either be soft tissue or in the bone. It could start out either one. And then soft tissue, there are the spindle cell. There's over 50 different types of spindle cell. That's just how it looks like under the microscope because like muscle cells are long. And, um, and so they kind of be elongated cells and small round blue cells, which are, uh, the blue is the nucleus. So they're growing and dividing. So they're small and round and those are different types. So there's many different kinds and they're named after what we believe the original cells. So for example, liposarcoma, fat, 
leiomyosarcoma, smooth muscle, bone and cartilage, osteosarcoma. Some, sar most sarcomas, we don't actually know the original cell. So it's just how the pathologist describes it under the microscope. Synovial sarcoma, for example, we thought that it started out from the synovium, which is the fluid around the joints, because these usually occur around the joints. But later we discovered that it's actually not from around the joints and it has a distinct mutation, but we just kept the name because there's so many different names. There's 175 different kinds. So they just had to stick to the name. Epithelioid sarcoma, for example, we don't know exactly what it's called, but it looks a little bit more rounder. Um, it looks like epithelial cells, which are round, but it's called oid. So it's like an epithelial cell. So they call it epithelioid sarcoma. Um, uh, and then these are just pictures of the pathology slides under the microscope. So this is a leiomyosarcoma where there's these elongated um, cells. This is the nucleus, which holds the genes and the cytoplasm that's the pink. Liposarcoma is a fat cell. Um, and so you can get liposarcoma when patients get diagnosed with liposarcoma. Like, is it because I'm fat? No, it has nothing to do with how fat you are. I have patients, you can be as skinny as a rail, big as a house, doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with how fat you are. It's just somehow the fat became abnormal and it mutated and turned into cancer. So, um, and there's different kinds of liposarcomas. There's well-differentiated liposarcomas which means it looks very similar to the original fat cells or pleomorphic, which means many size and shape. You can't really tell a pattern. Those cells are very abnormal. Angiosarcoma from blood vessels. And so that um, those cells are, you can see some red blood cells in there, red cells. Ewing sarcoma, again, it could be extraskeletal or from the bone. These are small round blue cells, synovial rhabdomyosarcoma. These kind of, they, they see these look different than these. These tend to be a little bit more slower growing than these round cells. These we have to treat with chemotherapy right away. And here's chondrosarcoma. There's osteosarcoma. It looks like um, bone. Um, and then cartilage here, car chondrosarcoma, and then Ewing sarcoma. There's many different kinds, again, over 175. And the most common, and so the divided, the top 50, it's, sorry, the top 10 are, make up 50%, and then the bottom, and then the, the other 50% are 165. So these are the more common kinds liposarcoma, leiomyosarcoma, osteosarcoma, bone, fat, small, Ewing's, rhabdomyosarcoma, skeletal muscle, angiosarcoma, synovial sarcoma. If you don't see your subtype on here, that means you're extra, extra special. Okay, GIST, gastrointestinal stromal tumor, is the most common type. Um, Usually the tumors start, again, sarcomas can start out anywhere in the body because you have connective tissue throughout the body. The most common is in the extremities. So two thirds happen in the extremities, whereas, because it makes more sense, whereas most of your bone, muscle, and fat in your arms and legs, legs are bigger than arms. So two of the extremities, two thirds can happen in the leg, one third in the arm can happen anywhere retroperitoneal means behind the abdomen area. You have in your abdomen, you have your abdominal wall, which is your muscle. And then you have a layer called the peritoneum that keeps the organ that your intestines in. You have your intestines. And then in the back, you have your back muscles and your kidneys. And then you have all this free space. So it's called retroperitoneal. Trunk, that would include your chest wall and upper back and then your head and neck area, okay? And as we know, only a third of the patients present with pain. So a lot, there can be a delay in diagnosis and could affect, and no one knows, you know, that not a lot of patients know about sarcomas and not a lot of doctors know about sarcomas. And so there's a delay in diagnosis. And a lot of times patients become very frustrated with that. And that's we want to do at the sarcoma exchange and get, get the awareness out 
so that patients can be either diagnosed early or made sure that they're treated by sarcoma experts. Again, gastrointestinal stromal tumor is the most common type of sarcoma, and that can either mostly occur in the stomach. It's not stomach cancer because it's the lining of, it's the, sorry, the outside. Stomach cancer is the inside, the lining, and then it can be detected by an endoscopy, which is a camera down the stomach but this is on the outside, so you can't always see it. You'd have to get a CAT scan or endoscopic ultrasound. It would be in the small intestine, colon, or esophagus, and about 5,000 are diagnosed, and the patients can get pain, nausea, bleeding. So again, the most important cancer term in the world is hope. You're not alone, and I just want to thank you guys. This is, I, I'm at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, and we have a large group here, and we're really thankful um, for the time that you guys are giving me today, and I'm happy to uh, open it up to questions. Thanks so much, Gina. I think we have And some. we have a couple of questions in the Q&A, so. Um, are go for it. Deep, the lesions considered solid tumors? I, I don't know what a BB lead. I think lesions. World or bone lesion. I may have to. I may have to look up what BIB lesion is. Maybe if we can. Uh, is there's another question in the chat if you want to answer that while we're waiting. Okay. Um, okay. So why is five years considered cured? How is this determined? That's a good question. I think that, you know, as time goes on, you're less and less likely for the cancer to come back. And so at one point when they were studying cancer back in the, you know, 60s and 70s, they saw differences in that. So they just made that as the cutoff. But, you know, um, and so that's just like the definition by the medical definition. Should we revisit that? Probably, but that's just how it was back when they could tell the difference um, in, in, it, in it coming back. Um, and what does undifferentiated mean? So undifferentiated, so the cells are supposed to look like the normal tissue, so, um, but different. So if it's well differentiated, it means it looks very similar to the normal cell. So well differentiated liposarcoma. If it's undifferentiated, it means that they can't really tell. It doesn't look like a fat cell. It doesn't look like a muscle cell. It doesn't look like a, a connective tissue cell, but they can tell it's a connective tissue cell because of certain stains that they do and what it looks like under the microscope, but they can't tell what, what the original cell is. It's, so they call it undifferentiated. Another term is called dedifferentiated, where it was originally... Uh, one particular type of cell, and then over time, like lost its, um, it, it's lost the looking like the, the original cell. So that, so we can see that in, we can see that in dedifferentiated liposarcomas or dedifferentiated chondrosarcomas, where you could tell it was originally that, but it no longer looks like that. Whereas, un, whereas undifferentiated, it never looked like it. Okay, um, are bone lesions considered solid tumor? Uh, oh, bone, okay, B, okay. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so, so if you see something in the bone, it could be um, three things. It could be a primary bone tumor, okay, which we don't know that, is that cancer, is that a sarcoma? or is it a benign tumor? So you'd have to get a biopsy and would see. Um, so that could be a primary, or you can have a lesion in the bone. Sometimes you can have like previous injuries and it could just look like something and it doesn't necessarily mean it's cancer, or we could biopsy it. And if it was your original cancer and it spread to the bone, then it's considered like, say if you had a, a, a a myxoid liposarcoma and then the, it spread to the bone and it's biopsy. There was a lesion in the bone. We biopsied and it, it will look like the original liposarcoma. 
So you mentioned well-differentiated liposarcoma. Can you explain D-differentiated and nixoid? Okay, so I explained the D-differentiated, um, where the D-differentiated, so you, have, you can have well-differentiated and that, that could mutate and turn into D-differentiated, which means it grows faster and it kind of loses its properties of being a liposarcoma. Sometimes D-differentiated come out of nowhere. Other times it could have mutated from a well-differentiated. Nixoid is a distinct subtype of liposarcoma that comes, that looks a little bit different under the microscope. And um, it could look like less fast growing. It could be more of a slower growing, but there could be areas in the biopsy that could show that it, it can be a fast growing. And it has a distinct mutation that we can test for to confirm the diagnosis of nixoid liposarcoma. Nixoid liposarcoma is different than other types of liposarcoma. It usually affects a little bit younger patient population in between 20s and 40s. And it, could, it can spread to the bones, whereas other sarcomas don't. So we do have to monitor patients with nixoid liposarcoma a little bit um, closely. Dr. D'Amato, we had a question in the chat um, from Claire who asked, how important are second opinions? Okay, so, um, <laughs> so it depends on where, you're, where the first opinion is, okay? So, you know, we're all about second opinions here at the Sarcoma Alliance, and really we mean ep sarcoma expert opinions, okay? So we want you to be treated by a sarcoma expert, or if you cannot be treated by a sarcoma expert, have a sarcoma expert somehow involved in your care, okay? So if you are in a place where you, there's not an expert sarcoma doctor, or you know your doctor doesn't know about sarcoma, but you can't get to an expertise place, you can get an opinion, you can, you can travel to that place, or you can get a remote um, visit um, uh, and you can get reimbursed. And then that expert sarcoma doctor can work closely with your doctor. So I have patients, and so you see Dr. Ripan just recently joined us. We have patients from all around the world. We don't treat every single one of those patients. We give recommendations. So now there, you will see in this talk, not every sarcoma expert has the same opinion. And we treat patients differently because maybe mainly where we were trained and um, because there are so many different kinds of sarcomas and we don't have all of our data isn't like you see there's 180,000, sorry, 280,000 patients with breast cancer every year. So we have really good studies and, and the protocols are very, um, solid protocols, whereas sarcomas, we don't have many studies and we don't have all the data. So patients can get treated differently. So, so if you, if you're with an expert, that's very good. And you don't necessarily have to go be getting all these opinions um, because that could sometimes confuse you, you know, fine. If you get it, want to get one other expert opinion, but you know, a lot, when we tell patients, oh, get second opinions, you know, then, then patients are kind of hopping around and just looking for different opinions and that makes it very confusing. So if you're with a sarcoma doctor that has a lot of experience or they may not have a lot of experience, but their center does, you should be in good shape and you don't have to be hopping around to different centers. What other questions? Let's see. I don't know where we are on time because I'm confused with the California time. <laughs> you're, you're good, Dr. Diamato. Okay. You, have, you have about 10 more minutes of Q&A. Okay. And okay. we okay. have, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so we have okay. about okay. Okay. Um, 10 more questions and they keep okay. on coming perfect. in in the Q&A okay. here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we talked about the cure. We answered that live. Okay, um, extended screening for the recurrent cancer can be worse. Need for extended screening given the thick recurrent. Yeah, so, so depending on your type of sarcoma um, and 
what stage you were at the diagnosis will depend on the chances of it coming back and how long you need to be screened and what kind of screening there is. And also if you had say a mutation that was hereditary, what kind of screening. So it is individual. The standard is we get scans up to five years and then stop, but some cancers, some sarcomas, we, we scan up to 10 years or even longer. So it's, it's very individual, but I do recommend, even if you're not getting scanned, that if you've been you know, many years out, still to be going to the doctor once a year for blood work and physical exam, and then your doctor can talk to you about um, what tests, what additional imaging needs to be after the five-year mark. Okay, if you have a recurrence within five years, does that usually mean you'll never be cured? That's not necessarily true. We have patients that um, it has come back and then it doesn't come back again. So, um, and you know, you never wanna say you'll never be cured even if it has spread because you just never know. Right now, maybe in 2021, it, it, there's no cure, but if we keep you alive with the cancer in your body, you never know. Tw you know, we're always researching new drugs and you could potentially be alive for the cure a few years later and then you will be cured. So you want to keep that hope alive, but you also want to be realistic and you don't want to be having false hope that, oh, my cancer has gone out of my body. You can say, you know what, my cancer is in my body, but I'm living with the cancer in my body. So you don't always have to be like, your end goal be cured. Your end goal should just be like living with cancer or living, right? And enjoying life, okay? Um, let's see, my diagnosis didn't include a stage. Are sarcomas usually staged like other cancers? If not, why not? Okay, so if it's a true sarcoma, it, most sarcomas are staged. You, your doctor might have not told you the stage. Um, if it's a benign tumor, like a desmoid tumor that sarcoma doctors treat and can be treated like a sarcoma, those don't have a stage. Otherwise, there is a stage. Sarcomas are staged differently than other cancers because every cancer has its own. They use the same staging system, the AJCC, but they have different um, ways of staging it based on the, every cancer has its own um, pattern of spread and different, um, and different prognostic factors, meaning chances of spread. So like breast cancer, for example, it's based on the size and if it's spread to a lymph node, because that's usually spreads to the lymph node. Colon, it's not based on the size of the tumor, it's based on the colon starts out from the inside and spreads out. So it's, so it's, the staging is based on how deep it goes out from the inside out. Sarcomas, it's based on the size of the tumor and the grade, how many cells are, how abnormal it looks under the microscope. And then GIST is, uh, is staged differently than other um, sarcomas. So um, there are the, you know, the, so you, you could ask your doctor what stage or, you don't necessarily have to, as long as you had treatment for it. it. The stage is important for the doctors to know what kind of treatment you need. Okay. Um, if a person notices a fatty lump on the arm or leg, what's the best route to proceed to rule out the sarcoma? So you want to go, you can go to um, your uh, primary care doctor and you can measure, you know, and if it's a lump that's less than five centimeters and hasn't been growing, then you should, and it's soft and movable, likely it's just a benign tumor and you can monitor it, you can measure it. And if you notice over time it gets bigger, then you have to go to the doctor and you need to get an MRI. If it's, um, but most lumps, 99 lumps out of one are not cancerous. So anything growing greater than five centimeters, hard, movable, painful, associated, then you need to go to the doctor and ask for an MRI. Okay, if a person is affected, okay. okay. Um, do cancer cells change over the course of disease, e.g. on the original pathology three years later? Does that matter for treatment? 
So most sarcomas, if it was the same kind of sarcoma, like a leiomyosarcoma, and then something popped up, and it would most likely be a leiomyosarcoma. Now, there are some sarcomas that can mutate into more aggressive form, like a well-differentiated liposarcoma can mutate into a de-differentiated. So, um, but mostly they're the same. Um, but usually if someone had their sarcoma resected and they were on follow-up and something new pops up, we usually do like to get a biopsy because it could maybe not even the, can may, number one, it may not be cancer, it could be infection, or it could be something else. How does cancer or treatment affect your immune system? Okay, so, you know, your immune system, cancer, there are some, and I've seen it, there are some sarcomas that could like, that can kind of elicit an immune response. And sometimes when patients um, get diagnosed with cancer, they may have elevated blood, oh, white blood cells. And that could be a sign that your immune system might've been trying to fight that cancer. Um, the treatment, depending on the kind of treatment that you're getting, um, can affect your immune system. And so, um, you know, you need to talk to your doctor about your specific treatment that you're on and how it affects the immune system. Um, the majority um, of chemotherapies do affect it, but for a short period of time, and then it gets normal again. Um, other um, oral medications may or may not affect the immune system. With D-differentiated chondrosarcomas, the treatment for both the original and the mutated changed the name. So a D-differentiated chondrosarcoma tends to be treated like an osteosarcoma, even though it's not, even though it's the same. Uh, say, so, a, so we do treat D-differentiated chondrosarcoma similarly osteosarcoma if it had mutated from an original um, chondrosarcoma, yes, the treatment is different. Um, does immunotherapy and targeted treatment work? We have for two all? minutes left. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. We'll hold off because does immunotherapy and targeted treatment, I think we're going to have an immunotherapy talk, right? We are or no? We do. So we'll, so we'll answer we that. Yeah. Stay tuned. That's a, you know, stay tuned for that talk. Okay. Um, how can we get information out to breast cancer patients out about our radio uh, oh, about radiation induced angiosarcoma and symptoms without alarming them? I knew nothing and was lucky to insist on lump removal with no typical skin symptoms. So, yes, yeah, so you know it, and I think educational programs like this and educational programs that we can give to physicians. Um, uh, is, is very helpful. You know, the more we do research on angiosarcoma and the more our papers are out there and the more physicians can learn about it and, and, they, can, and they can see, um, you know, and they can recognize it. Um, the, the, because angiosarcoma, radiation-induced sarcomas are so rare, um, the standard is still for breast cancer um, radiation and lumpectomy instead of mastectomy because the rates are so, so low. Um, um, so, you know, but I, the radiation oncologist, you know, and your oncologist for breast cancer should be telling you this is a possibility and then you can make a choice. You know, we're always making choices of, of things and if we know the risk and we can, we can monitor closely. So um, yes, the, that's a, the million dollar question or billion dollar question, how do we, how do we educate people? And I think just more research and more, more um, educational programs can help. Okay. I think we've got time for one more. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, when a liposarcoma tumor in the chest wall is resting against the ribs, it is, is it necessary to remove the ribs. So it would be dependent upon where it's located as far as what type of liposarcoma. So that would be likely you have to have everything that the tumor is touching to, um, to be removed. But if it's a slower growing liposarcoma, sometimes those can be spared. We will have surgeons on here and you can maybe save that question for the surgeon. 
Okay. okay. I think that that should be, I'll try to answer the rest of the questions um, on the chat. And again, we'll have, we have a great upcoming list of doctors and they'll be able to answer these questions and really appreciate your time and looking forward to hearing everybody's um, lectures and, and helping answer questions. So thank you so much.